Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and verse 58 states, Therefore, my brethren and ladies too, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Bishop Nesby, being in a position of a pastor or leader, you are in a position to be misunderstood, to be talked about. You have stood the test. Bishop Nesby, you have the spirit of faith. There's a difference in praying and believing and praying having the spirit of faith. The church is debt free. You built the fellowship hall in the back, $144,000 debt free in a short period of time. Some other pastors couldn't have did that, but you had the spirit of faith. I often wondered what it would be like if there was no apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, or pastors the world will be worse than it is now, completely lost. Thank you for being part of the solution for the kingdom of God through fasting and praying. St. Matthew 5 and 13 says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but the salt have lost its savior, wherein shall it be salted. It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out, to be trodden on the foot of men. You have that salt through praying, witnessing, bringing souls to Christ, and they were saved. Thank you for praying always remember me in prayers. When I was working, coming home, when I was working at Durham, coming home on 40, I could barely keep my eyes open. I was so sleepy, fighting sleep, but somehow I made it home. But that same night when I came to church, Bishop said, Brother Kearney, I was praying for you today. I really was praying for you. It dawned on me that your prayer helped me, helped save me that day, and I got home safely. The prayer of the righteous availeth much. A lot has been done in 60 years. You has married me and Ann, my wife sitting here. That was December 22nd, 1979. You have prayed for us through our 44 years of marriage. Our sons and their families are blessed because of word of God. When Jamie was an arm baby, my wife took him around the altar, and you rub oil on his head, and you said, that's a man right there. You said, I'm telling you what the Spirit said. The Spirit said, that's a man right there. And, oh, I felt just like a man, too, when she said that. And he was quite a man because when he drew, grew up, we taught him, and I see, you know, he knew how to carry himself and what to do, how to do, to do the right thing and to protect himself. And also, where did I go? Around, and you rub oil on his head. Okay, you said, this is a man. The spirit said that he's a man. Another thing I want to say, you have taught us how to have a forgiven heart. You have taught us don't hold no grudges. Let it go. It ain't worth going to hell over. You told us let's do that. You have taught us how to give and to forgive, and you have taught us on occasions like uh, sympathy. Put some money in a car when you send a car. Put some money in it. And if somebody have a birthday or Christmas, you send them a card. Put some money in it. You know, you have taught us that. And you know, and that was that's, that's real, real, real good that you did that. You know what, Bishop Nesby? I can't wait to uh, Saturday, the 27th of this month, the 5 o'clock, so we can be at that sister and pastoral anniversary. I'm going to be so glad, and everybody that's going to come, guess what? We're going to have a wonderful time. Happy anniversary, Bishop Nancy. My Lord, I'm not coming behind that. Hallelujah. Bishop Nesbitt, congratulations. Happy 60th Pastor anniversary. Tonight we say thank you, thank you, thank you for all you've done as a good shepherd, caring for and watching over God's sheep. As I thought about you and what to say, I saw the words, a sower went out to sow. 
You've been sowing this ship for 60 years, which we know is found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Bishop, you have been sowing seeds into the kingdom of God for over 60 years, and you are a great shepherd. I'm going to ad lib a little bit on Luke 4 and 4. It says, and when much people were gathered together, that would be Deliverance Cathedral of Love and all the people you ministered to, they were come to him, they came to you. Out of every city, they come from Raleigh, Garner, Clayton, Greensboro, uh, Rocky Mount, um, uh, Fairmount, Brookhaven. They come from all over the place. He spake a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, some fell upon a rock, some fell upon thorns, and others fell on good ground, and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. Matthew and Mark said, other seed fell into good ground and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100. Bishop, you and maybe all of us are just at our 60-fold blessing, representing 60 years of pastorate. Job 8 and 7 says, Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. Spiritually, the parable is saying the sower soweth the word, but when they, when they heard it, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. Or they receive the word with gladness, but there is no root. They endure for a time when affliction or persecution arises. For the word's sake, immediately they are offended, or the word is heard. But the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things enter and in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. But Bishop, remember, you still sowed. But the good news, Bishop, is that it's not lost, sower. Keep on sowing. Look around tonight and the remaining services and the events to come, and you will see the seeds that have grown and are still growing, according to Luke 4 and 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground. That's us tonight. Such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30 fold, some 60, and some 100. You may have pastored 60 years, and 91 is beckoning you to come, but your seed bag is not empty, Bishop. I hate to tell you that. Your seed bag is not empty. You haven't reached a hundredfold yet. You still have seeds to sow, sower. Remember the seeds of faith that you have already sown? Seeds of prayer that has healed the sick, lifted burdens and healed broken hearted? Seeds of encouragement? Seeds that brought salvation into the heart of the unsaved. Seeds of hope. Monetary seeds that you planted from DCL and your own personal money. Seeds that fed the hungry and clothed the naked. You may not even remember every seed that you have sown or the place in which you have sown them, but your record is on high. I thank you for the seeds you have sown in my life, in the Kearney and the Rogers lives, in our parents, in our children and siblings. Bishop, down through the years, you have sown many seeds of instruction, seeds of integrity, how to be honest, cleanliness, organization, seeds of giving and receiving, seeds of comfort, seeds of sharing tears and laughter, seeds of sacrificial giving of your time and your family's time, seed of training, for you have been a training center for many clergy who have gone out to start ministries, and those of us who are still here. I could go on and on because the half cannot be told. That record is reserved on high. So continue to sow, sower, <laughs> until your bag is empty. You have not only wanted the seeds you have sown to survive, but more importantly, to have quality of life, to thrive, to prosper, to flourish, to be successful. 
So I close with our affirmation according to 3 John, the first verse. Beloved, that includes you, Bishop, M.S. Nesbitt, and everyone here tonight. I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospered. Again, happy 60th anniversary. Amen. Pastor Bishop, happy 60th pastoral anniversary. On behalf of my husband, myself, and our family, we thank God for you. Amen. For being an example in our lives, for your love, your presence in our lives, for your many acts of kindness to us, and your thoughtfulness, your encouragement to us. Amen. When we were going through over the years, we thank God for you. Amen. A scripture comes to mind, Jeremiah 3.15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And we thank God, Bishop, you have gave, given us knowledge and understanding, whether we receive it or not, but you have given it to us. We thank God for your journey, which began with prayer. Amen. And establishing a foundation in 1964 on Bloodworth Street. We thank God for you, Bishop, starting this ministry with prayer as a foundation for this building and this ministry. You journey on using your prayer, which is the key, and you use your faith to Linden Avenue. Amen. Then to 1705 Curtis Drive, where we are today. We thank God for you, Bishop, which you have endured with prayer and faith through opposition as a woman pastor when they didn't say a woman need to preach, but your husband, Brother Nesbitt, needed to preach. We thank God for you, Pastor, enduring through your affliction in your body. I remember when you used to get that catch in your side and you was out of service for a while. And they would call Pastor Ellis, Bishop getting all up would say, we need to come together, we need to have a shut in. Because we need to pray for our pastor and our bishop. And then you went through with the diagnosis of cancer. Amen. And I remember Brother Nezra came in one night. We were here one Sunday night, and he was looking a little down. I said, Pop, you all right? He said, yeah, girl, pray for your pastor. And so we thank God that you have endured, that even the X-ray, whatever the X-ray said about your affliction, it did not, it did not affect you like it could have. We thank God because you endure with prayer and you believe in healing and deliverance and you pray till something happened. We thank God for you, Pastor, that you have endured over the years. We thank you, Bishop, for all of the love that you have shared, not only to us, but members on the outside, pastors, leaders all over the outside. And even when we journeyed to Hampton, Praise the Lord. We thank God that you were a giver. You taught us how to give. And I remember a lady up there, Bishop Nebbett gave her $100. And that lady talked about that $100 from the day she gave it to her to the day we left. And every time that we would come through the service, she said, there it go, there it go. Where's that lady? Where's that lady? Bishop Nebbett said, y'all go, y'all go over there. Church. Go see me. Go get the address. And I would give her the address to the church and everything. And she wanted the number. She said, that lady gave me $100. She was just telling me, she gave me $100. That's kind of a thing. How much money did you give me? <laughs> but we thank God. We thank God that she has. A, she's a giver. And we thank God for your giving, Pastor, your love, your endurance, your patience with us, your prayer certainly with us. And you are standing fearless and strong. And won't you continue to stay strong in the Lord? Stand, may the Lord strengthen you until your work and labor is completed on this earth. God bless you, Pastor. I love you. Praise the Lord. Happy anniversary, Bishop. God bless you. 
I stand today to give tribute to you, Bishop, and it is truly an honor and a privilege to give tribute to such a beautiful woman of God as you. And when I think of giving a tribute, I first thought about when we first met. I remember about 10 years ago, you came into the DMV, and it was crowded, and you were supposed to take a number and have a seat. But you walked right to me, and you said, will you help me? And I looked at you, and it was instant favor. I said, there is no way I'm going to tell this lady to take a number. I said, yes, ma'am, absolutely. I can help you. So I began to do your paperwork, and we began to talk. I had no idea who you were. You were just a nice lady that I met. So I began to do the paperwork. I said, sign right here. Sign on the yellow highlight. And you said, well, did you want me to sign M.S. Nesbitt or do you want me to sign Bishop Nesbitt? I said, you're Bishop Nesbitt? Oh, my goodness. I know you, Bishop. I got family that are members in your church. And you said, come to the church, come to the church. I say that was not a by chance meeting. I say that was God. I thank you for allowing me to come and be a member of your church and for being my pastor I give honor to God for that because truly my life has changed tremendously just from the past 10 years that I came under your leadership so I just thank you because when my family had death you called me you were there you called me every day and when I had my own personal health diagnosis you called me numerous times praying for me claiming total healing and victory and I thank you Bishop because you gave me individual leadership when you had so many families that were under you so I, I really give honor to God for you you are truly called and anointed by God to offer such loving leadership and to individual families when you have so many families here under your leadership, you are the true epitome of a godly woman, a woman who studies the scriptures, preaches sound doctrine, will not compromise the word of God. And as Proverbs 31 and 25 say, you are clothed in strength and dignity. You are an honorable woman who is strong and victorious. And you didn't sit back and wait for somebody else to go forth and establish your ministry 60 years ago. You went forth and did the work that was assigned to your hands. And as you told us, when they talked about you, you pressed. And when they said you couldn't do it, you pressed. And when, they, when you faced your own health challenges, you still pressed. You're a shining example to us all. You press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And now here we are today, 60 years later, to give tribute, to applaud you, to give accolades to you. And most of all, thank you for your wisdom. And thank you because you have impersonally instilled in me and my family great wisdom. Because your wisdom and direction, my life has changed forever. So we praise and thank God for your strength, for being that wonderful, godly example of perseverance, faithfulness, generosity, kindness, and love. We thank God for how you have labored in the ministry, the sacrifices that you have made, always keeping God first. So Bishop Nesby, we love you, and we salute you on tonight. We congratulate you for 60 years of excellence during the work of the Lord. May the Lord God Almighty continue to shine on you. May he continue to bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you, Bishop Nesbitt, and we love you on tonight. Amen. Thank you.